Hello and welcome to video lecture series in sociology. Today we are going to discuss chapter 7 titled as mass media and communications from your textbook social change and development in India. This chapter is divided into 6 parts. So far we have discussed about the features, functions, role and impact of mass media. We have discussed about difference between traditional and modern mass media and communications and emergence of mass media in India during the colonial years. To some extent we have also discussed about the positive and negative developments in the field of mass media. Today we will discuss further about the developments of mass media and communication in India after independence or in the last 65 or 67 years. The nature of mass media is determined by the social conditions of any given society. Mass media in India is a reflection of diversity and complexity of our culture and society. In fact, media reflects the nature and structure of Indian society. As discussed earlier, media influences and also gets influenced by the social and cultural structure of any given society. This two-way relationship between media and society is clearly visible in societies all over the world and especially in India as well. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India called upon the media to perform function of a watchdog of democracy. The media in the independent India was supposed to spread the spirit of self-reliance and nation building among the people. The media, particularly the radio, was seen as an important means to inform people about various schemes of development and efforts taken up by the government after independence for the development of society. Since early 20th century, media in India was used to challenge the traditional practices such as caste system, untouchability, child marriage, oppression of women, beliefs in superstition and faith healing. After independence, the government attempted to promote development and it adopted a rational and scientific approach to achieve growth. The films division of Government of India played an important role in spreading awareness among people and achieving goals of development. The films division in fact produced a large number of newsreels and documentaries on socially relevant issues such as say health and hygiene of people, significance of small family, child and adult education, women's issues, economic development, environment etc. These films and documentaries were an important source of generating awareness among people. These were shown before the screening of films in the movie theatres. In fact, depending upon accessibility that how much is available to people, other forms of media were also used for the purpose of development and spreading information about the growth. Let us discuss about the major forms of media in India one by one, namely radio, TV and print media. Let us start with radio. Radio broadcasting in India started through amateur ham broadcasting clubs in Calcutta and Madras in 1920s. During the Second World War, it became a public broadcasting system and major instrument of propaganda for our allied forces in Southeast Asia. There were only six radio stations in India at the time of independence located in the major cities and they primarily catered to the urban audience that is people living in the cities. There were only 2,80,000 radio sets for a population of 35 crore people in India. After independence, the media was seen as an important element with a crucial role to play in the process of development. The programs on All India Radio were primarily informative and educating. They mainly consisted of news, current affairs, health, agriculture and economic development. Let us take instance of Green Revolution. As a part of Green Revolution during the 1960s, as we have already discussed in a previous chapter, high yielding varieties of seeds were introduced in the India for, for the first time. In these years, All India Radio undertook a major campaign during late 60s and early 70s for farmers on the methods and benefits of Green Revolution. What did they do? They developed special programs on high yielding varieties and they were broadcast all over the country. These program units which were making these programs headed by a subject specialist visited fields and actual sites and interviewed farmers and they recorded first hand accounts of the farmers who had adopted the methods of green revolution and high yielding variety of seeds. In 1957, All India Radio started a channel that was both entertaining and educating. This channel was called as Vivid Bharti. 
Apart from news items, Vivid Bharti had programs on film music and songs. Vivid Bharti in fact became very popular among people and some of its programs are still remembered by elders in the families. Being popular, this channel started sponsored programs and it got advertisements that started generating revenue for All India Radio and the channel. Expansion of the radio service was one of the priorities of the government at that point of time, particularly in border areas and state capitals. Over years, AIR developed a massive infrastructure. Keeping cultural, linguistic and geographical diversity of India in mind, it now operates at three levels. These three levels are local, regional and national, catering to different sections of society and people. In fact, you will be surprised to know that initially the cost of radio set that was operated by electricity was a major constraint in expansion of radio. However, the transistor revolution during the 1960s changed the scene. The transistor was battery operated. This reduced the cost of the radio set. It was not dependent upon electricity and transistor was more accessible because it was portable as well. By the end of 20th century, around 110 million households that is two third of all the households in India had access to radio broadcast in 24 languages and 146 dialects. Almost 30 percent of these households were in rural areas. Over the years, All India Radio introduced talk shows on current issues and round the clock update of news events and happenings all over the world. AIR was catering to diverse set of people in different languages. Radio in fact became a binding force in India that gave people a sense of belongingness to a nation called as India. People in India became aware of different parts of the world, different parts of the country and about the culture and language of other communities existing in India. In fact, wars with the neighboring countries during 60s and 70s and other national tragedies also contributed to development of feeling of belongingness to the nation. It would be interesting for you to ask your parents or grandparents about the program on All India Radio, which programs they used to listen to most, what was their favorite channel. Compare these answers with the present scenario. Do you listen to radio? If yes, what programs you like? And if no, why don't you do listen to radio? Try looking at the content of radio programs in the contemporary times. See how radio has changed over the years. What does it indicate about the changes in the nature of a society? As a sociologist, you should try to look behind the reasons for these changes which are so obvious. Let us discuss about television now. Today, television is one of the most powerful and influential means of communication. We cannot imagine our lives without TV. Do you know how and when did the TV start? In 1936, BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation of Britain, began the first television service of the world. Three years later, TV broadcast began in the US and by 1950s, a large number of countries were broadcasting TV programs. But these broadcasts at that point of time were black and white in color. The first successful program in color was transmitted by CBS in USA in 1953. Television broadcast started in India under the ages of All India Radio only. It began on 15th September 1959 as an experiment with the aim of promoting development, especially in the rural areas, as we just discussed about how government wanted to use these medium for communication for development. There were only two one-hour programs being telecast in a week, each of one hour duration only, and All India Radio operationalized these initial broadcasts. The initial programs were educational in nature, particularly for school children and for farmers. But initially, buying a TV was beyond the capacity of majority of people in India. So, several community television sets were set up in villages for people to watch these programs. With growing popularity of the TV programs, by 1970s, a large number of TV centers came up in other parts of the country. They were spreading all across rural areas. In 1976, Doordarshan, which was so far operating under the AIR, became separate and independent department looking after TV programs. The Satellite Instructional Television Experiment, also called as SITE, S -I -T -E, was conducted between August 1975 and July 1976. In this program, the government of India used the American satellite ATS-6 to broadcast educational programs. 
these programs were broadcast to 2400 TV sets directly 4 hours daily. By 1975, four television stations were set up in Delhi, Mumbai, Srinagar and Amritsar. Three more stations in Calcutta, Madras, Jalandhar were established within a year. Every broadcasting center had its own set of programs, which was a mix of entertainment, education and information like news, cartoon shows for children and women's program, agriculture related programs for farmers, one famous program is Krishi Darshan and some component of entertainment in regional language as well. And there was a constant update of news items on all these channels. A major turning point in the history of Indian TV was the introduction of color telecast. Doordarshan provided national coverage of Asian Games in 1982 in color for the first time through the satellite Inset 1A. This changed the world of TV viewing in India forever. It resulted in large number of sponsors coming to advertise on TV. With them, the target audience also changed. It became now more middle class oriented and attempted to cater to their choice rather than just being confined to educational and farming based programs. Along with information and education, the content and focus of programs also changed. It shifted more towards entertainment like daily serials, films, cartoon, music, sports, etc. There was also an increase in the coverage of sports by Doordarshan during these years. In 1983, when India won the World Cup in England, this match was being watched live by millions of people back home. Since then, there has been a rapid commercialization of television broadcasting in India. In 1980s, there was a turning point decade in the history of television. It was during this time that large number of TV transmitters were established, which resulted in a substantial rise in the percentage of population having access to television program. This was also the time when some famous television serials were started like Hamlog, Buniyad and famous epic serials of Ramayana and Mahabharat. Next, we will discuss about the print media. Along with radio and TV, let us look at the print media also in India. We have already discussed that print media played a very significant role in the social reform movement and freedom struggle during the first half of the 20th century. The print media continued with its role as a partner in the process of nation building even after independence. Print media in general faced a tough challenge during 1975 with the declaration of emergency and censorship of media. But with elections in 1977, democracy was restored and it became again free. The contribution of print media to the field of mass communication has been immense. It has been a major source for providing information, education and entertainment as well. Despite the advent and advancement of electronic media like TV, which has greater impact because of its visual content, print media like newspaper and magazines continue to have their relevance. Because print media has a longer shelf life and greater impact upon readers, which lasts long. Mass media such as radio, TV are different from other means of communication. They involve large scale capital investment, production teams, organization and management of production and infrastructure. Like any other social institution, mass media is also dependent upon society. Its nature, structure and content is all determined and varies according to the socio-political and cultural context of any society you are talking about. We know mass media influences society, at the same time it reflects the nature and structure of society. It also responds to the changes happening in the society. At times these changes are rapid, at times these changes are slow. But both society and media change constantly and have a dynamic relationship. This relationship in Indian society has come out very clearly since the last two decades, particularly since the era of globalization. We will deal with these changes and developments in the next section. To conclude this lecture, let us summarize what we discussed in this part. We started our discussion about emergence of modern mass media in India and how mass media played an important role in the process of growth and development in Indian society after independence. How mass media was used by the government in order to promote growth and development by informing and educating people. In the next part, we discussed about the three main forms of mass media that is radio, TV and print media and their development in India since independence. In the next part of this chapter, we will discuss about mass media and communications in the last two decades, particularly since the globalization. 
till then you can enjoy reading this part of the chapter thank you